So in this video, we're going to go over how to draw schematics for our circuits. That's how you spell schematics. But schematics are essentially plans for circuits so that you can communicate your circuit design to somebody else. Now for this activity, you're going to need just paper and pencil. And especially as you're learning for the first time and you're trying to learn what these components are, having a copy of my common component symbol decoder will be very handy. To the right is what the component looks like and its name, and to the, le to the left is the schematic symbol. Now just for illustrated purposes, I'll be using pencil crayons to draw the lines, but when you're actually doing your schematic, you won't actually need to use pencil crayons. Just use a pencil or a pen. With our decoder handy, let's start and draw our schematic for our very first circuit together which is this one over here. Now, when you are drawing a schematic, you could start anywhere, but personally, I like to start with always moving at the battery and then moving one component at a time. That way I don't get overwhelmed. And so the very first thing that I'm going to do is convert this battery into its schematic symbol. Now, some symbols like our push button, our switch, our resistor, they're non-polarized meaning it doesn't really matter which one's positive and which one's negative. However, for our battery, or our polarized capacitor, or our LED, they are polarized, meaning they have a plus and they have a minus. So that if you are working with a polarized component symbol, much like our battery, for example, if something is going to the positive side, that it actually connects to the positive side of the symbol. In this case, this is the big T, which is the positive side, and not the little T, which is the negative side. So going back to our schematic, I'm going to start by drawing our battery. So I'm going to draw out the symbol. And just so I don't get confused, I'm going to write positive and negative. And of course, it's really important to be specific. This is 3 volts, so I'm going to write 3V, 3 volts. So next, I'm going to go and draw this positive wire here, which is the red wire. And so I'm going to draw that wire. I'm just going to put a bend in it just to keep it simple. And next, we have our next component, which is our resistor over here. The symbol for the resistor is the squiggly line, so I'm going to go ahead and draw the squiggly line. Now remember when drawing the resistor, it's three squiggly lines. And again, I wanna be specific. This type of resistor is a 220 ohm resistor. So I'm gonna write 220 ohms. The omega symbol is short for ohms. The other end of the resistor is connected to a wire, in this case, a blue wire. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to add that wire. Now again, if you're doing this at home, you don't need to use colored pencils. Now I'd like to point out that in the diagram here, the wire bends this way, and in my schematic, the wire bends down this way. And honestly, it doesn't matter. It's not so much the direction the line goes in, but rather the wire is connected between the, this end of the 220 ohm resistor and the positive part of the LED. So now I'm going to draw the LED so let's go ahead and find the LED on our schematic symbol, which is this one over here. The LED is polarized, meaning it has a positive and it has a negative. When you're drawing the symbol, it's incredibly important to make sure that in this case, this end of the resistor goes to the positive part of the LED. So I'm gonna go ahead, extend that line out. And since it goes to the positive part, it's gonna to go to the flat part of this triangle. So here's my triangle. I'm going to color the triangle in. Then there's a line. And then it goes this way. And this is important. There are two arrows that go outward in the direction of the negative. So I'm going to draw those two arrows. Now it's incredibly, incredibly important that you draw the arrows pointing out this way. What you do not want to do is draw the arrows pointing inwards. 
this component here with the arrows pointing inward is called a photodiode, and that converts light into electrical current, which is the opposite of the LED, which is the one that we're talking about here. My main point here is do not go and take creative interpretations of these schematic symbols. If you change something, you might actually be talking about another component altogether. Moving on, the negative part of this LED is connected by a green wire. And that connects to the positive end of a component called a diode, which looks like this. I'm going to copy the symbol. It goes to the positive end. So I'm going to draw the line. And I'm going to draw the triangle. And then there's a line. So I'll draw the line. And then I'll draw the other end. And remember how I said the direction of the arrows are important. If you forget to draw the arrows, you are talking about a completely different component because the diode looks exactly like the LED symbol, but just without the outward pointing arrows. Finally, to complete our circuit, the negative end of the LED goes back to the negative part of the circuit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the purple pencil and connect it. I'd just like to point out that there are a variety of different ways that you could represent the same circuit. You don't have to make it look exactly like that. For example, I could take the battery and I can start the battery here. Positive, negative. I can have the battery come down and I could put the resistor here. And then I could have the LED go this way. I could put the diode there. And then I can connect it back to negative. Both schematics are still equally valid because what matters is not the location or where the battery is or how many things are on a line, but rather that the things that should be connected are connected. That being said, make your schematic nice and clear and easy to read. I mean, yes, technically it's correct, but this just adds an extra layer of difficulty. All right, let's move on to our second circuit. So this one is called a parallel circuit because it has parallel branches. Before we get overwhelmed, let's take it one step at a time and let's start with the battery. So just to be a little bit different, as I mentioned before, the battery can be anywhere. And in this diagram, it doesn't specify which one is the positive and which one is negative, but I can infer that this one is positive just because red is traditionally reserved for positive and black is traditionally reserved for negative. So I'll write positive. And before I forget, I'm going to focus at one component at a time. So there's my red line. Before we start panicking, let's deal with one component at a time. I'm going to start and I'm going to go and focus on the blue branch. And I'm just going to ignore this path over here. I've got a blue line. I've got a resistor over here. And if you forgot, it's three squiggly lines. Specify its resistance value, which is 220 ohms. This end of the resistor is then connected to the positive end of the LED. Here's a green wire. There's the LED over here. And then the negative part of the LED is connected to the diode by a blue wire. So I'm just gonna focus about the blue wire. I know that there's a brown wire here, but we're going to ignore it for now. So then here's the light blue wire. This component here is the diode. The negative end of the LED connects to the positive part of the diode, which is this base here. This time, don't add the arrows. We have our negative part of the diode, and that connects all the way back to the negative part of the LED. So I'm going to draw that in. We're going to look at this other component now. 
this end of the 470 ohm resistor is connected to this red wire. As you can see, that's the tan wire being connected there. You would also be correct in saying that this 470 ohm resistor is connected to the blue wire as well. I'm going to take my tan and create a separate branch. And again, I'm going to add a resistor. I'm going to specify because as you can see, these are two different valued resistors. Next, this resistor, this end, is connected by a gray line to the positive part of the LED. And because the schematic does not specify what color, I'm just going to go ahead and leave it blank. And then this part, the negative part of the LED, or the cathode, also, if you follow that brown wire, connects to the positive part of the diode. You would also be correct in saying the negative part of this LED is connected to the blue wire here. To take the brown, and just for neatness, I'm going to connect that brown wire to that blue wire. And that's exactly what the schematic is saying. Brown is connected to light blue, and light blue is also connected to the diode. Again, this isn't the only way that you could represent the circuit, but this is how I chose to do it. And let's look at circuit three together. Uh, and this time we've got our potentiometer in here. But before we start panicking about that, Let's go back to our familiar steps and let's start with our battery. And so we've got our battery over here. Again, my red wire is positive, so I'm gonna keep with that convention here. Three volts to let the person know that I'm dealing with a three volt circuit. From the red line, it gets connected to one of the tabs of this switch. And so we're going to go back to our decoder. There's our toggle switch. And if you look at the symbol, it actually kind of makes sense because there are two terminals on the switch and there are two terminals here. Here's one of the terminals, which might correspond to this one. And here's another. And the other end of the terminal gets connected to this component here, which is called a potentiometer. But we'll worry about that later. This end of the toggle switch starts to go to our potentiometer. Now, it may not be as clear in the picture, but in real life, there are three physical areas where you could potentially solder a wire to a potentiometer. There's this prong here, this prong here, and this prong over here. In the diagram, I just numbered them. Just like in real life, if there are three different places where you could hook up the potentiometer on our symbol, you could hook it up to this end, you could hook it up to this end here, which is the end of the arrow, or you could hook it up to the other end of the squiggly line. Something that's really important when you are communicating your design with regards to a potentiometer is this middle prong here. The arrow, number two, corresponds with prong number two. I'm going just to go ahead and draw the potentiometer, which starts off with the squiggly line. One, which is this end over here, is connected to the blue. Three, which is this prong here, is not connected to anything. So that's just going to be floating in space. That and then I've got my little arrow, and that arrow represents terminal number two of the potentiometer. That's the wiper terminal. So I'm going to draw the arrow there. Number two is connected to this end of the resistor. This potentiometer is a 10 kilo ohm potentiometer, so I'm going to specify that it's 10 kilo ohms. This end of the resistor is connected to the positive part of the LED through this green wire. Now, the negative part of this LED is connected to this component here, which is called a polarized capacitor. Add a pink line, and then we're going to look up the symbol for a polarized capacitor. Here it is. Now, negative part of LED goes to positive part 
of the capacitor. So you can see that the positive end is the T and the negative end is this anchor looking thing. The negative is this end here. And the negative connects to the negative part of the battery. Uh, I will need to indicate the capacitance for this capacitor. Capacitance is the ability for a system to store its electric charge, and the unit for capacitance is measured in something called farads, and this Greek symbol means micro. So essentially, I'm saying that this capacitor is a 40 micro farad capacitor. And again, it's really important because if someone is trying to recreate the circuit, they got to go to the store and they got to go buy the right type of capacitor. Moving on to our final circuit, I'm going to start again with the battery. And just so that I don't get overwhelmed, I'm just going to ignore the bottom half for now and we'll worry about that a little bit later. There is a 470 ohm resistor. And now I'm going to connect the resistor to the blue LED. And for some reason, the client really wants a blue LED, so I'm just going to write the blue LED. There is a brown wire, so I will uh, add that brown wire. And as we can see, the brown wire goes to this NPN transistor. So what we'll do is we'll pause over here and I will work on this branch. At this point, we have a 10 kilo ohm resistor or, and that 10K resistor is connected to the positive end. So I'm going to go ahead. And as we can see, the 470 ohm resistor is connected to the red and so is the 10K ohm resistor. The other end of this resistor connects to this push button. There are two terminals or two areas where you can solder onto the push button and there are the two terminals that you could connect to. That end of the resistor is connected to it, so I'll just do a blue line. The other end of the push button is connected back to our transistor. All right, unfortunately, I have procrastinated enough. Um, I have to deal with this transistor here. Over here on my decoder is the transistor. As you look on the transistor, there are three different prongs, which essentially have three different places where you could physically connect a wire to. They are called the emitter, the base, and the collector. Likewise with the symbol, there are the three corresponding connection points. It's also incredibly important to remember that each particular prong corresponds to a particular section on the symbol. So for example, the second wire here, which is the same as here, the base, refers to the B. This one here, the collector, corresponds to the C, which is this one here. The one that's furthest to the left has to have the arrow that's pointing outwards, that's the emitter. Unlike the resistor where you could plug it in either way and it doesn't really care, the transistor is very picky. If you connect the wrong pin to something, it's not going to work. If you hold the transistor in your hand so that it looks like a happy face, much like this, you know the first one will be E, the next one would be B, and the last one would be C. One way to remember is eat big cookie. So you are happy when you eat big cookie. So one thing that's helpful is do what I did and write down E, B, and C, eat big cookie, so you know which one is which and you don't get mixed up. We've got our middle one here, which is the base, and I can sort of see that the other end of the switch connects to the base. I'll just go ahead and draw the T junction and I'm going to connect this end of the switch to the base. The negative end of the LED connects to this pin here, which is the collector or C. And so I'm going back to my diagram. The collector goes and bends into the base like this. 
It doesn't have an arrow. And finally, we have our emitter, which is the prong or pin that's over here. And the emitter in our symbol is the arrow that's pointing outward. And that emitter goes back to the negative of the battery. At this point, I'm going to add the circle. And just for clarity's sake, for whoever's reading it, they'll appreciate it. I'll write C up here, B up here, and E up here. If you were going to the electronics store, you would need to know what type of transistor they would need to buy because transistors come in a whole bunch of different varieties. So this particular one is called a 2N3904. Realistically, this part here is really unnecessary because if you were to Google or go to the electronics store and buy a 2N3904, that would be an NPN transistor. That's its part name. And the other advantage of you learning how to draw a schematic is that you actually know how to read a schematic. Because normally, you would actually only get this, and you could use this to translate these symbols into actual physical objects to hook up this. And that's how you draw schematics. Thanks for watching.